Hey, Mackey's Motors fans. Been a long time since I posted. Been uh, really busy. Been a tough year so far, but finally getting back around to getting things in shape. Just wanted to show you the current project of what I've been working on. A little different than the buggies. This is a 1971 Speed X S32 tractor that I was able to find up in New York. Uh, had quite a few issues. Um, the biggest issue was no tires, uh, rotted out rims, no steering, and uh, some pretty beat up sheet metal. I was told the engine ran, but it didn't run well and it was still missing a couple of parts. Not knowing the rarity of the tractor, I had uh, made plans. The uh, original reason was to kind of revisit a project I did way back in the day with my father, which was to build a hit and miss tractor. Uh, we did one back in 2004, 2005. It's on my channel if you go through the videos. It was powered by a Fairmont Railway two-stroke hit and miss engine. And um, the plans were to do the exact same thing with this. I have uh, two Fairmont Railway engines. They're both QBs um, from 1931 to 1944. Um, I have one running and one in the process of restoration, but the restoration is... Uh, <laughs> Well, quite the process. I've had some big hiccups, but this tractor uh, is pretty substantial in size. It's got 16 inch wheels for the rear, which uh, we just mounted the tires up so we could roll the tractor around, but these rims are going to get stripped down and most likely powder coated. Um, just picked up a seat and a new bracket. We've been doing a lot of paint work on it, trying to cover up some of the ugliness. There was a lot of rust. Um, sheet metal wasn't perfectly straight. Um, there was actually a lot of things in dents. We straightened out the best we could. Um, well, we'll start with the engine here. This is the semi-restored <laughs> semi Fairmont QB engine. Um, got the carburetor completely done except for some new gaskets. Gonna need some gaskets that goes on the back. Uh, ignition is all done up. Everything's ready to rock and roll painted. Unfortunately, in my infinite wisdom, I wanted to clean out the throttle bore, make sure everything was clean inside. And um, in removing the throttle valve, I had actually broken the end of the throttle. So some students are actually working on creating a new one for me because they're quite hard to find. Likewise, we were gonna polish this aluminum water cooler we were going to sand it down, get all the rough cast off, which we were doing a fantastic job with. And uh, then we were going to hit it with the DA and then start polishing and give it that chrome finish. Unfortunately, the water hopper funnel, which is cast iron, was seized pretty bad on top of the tank. And the bolts snapped off, but the one snapped off and cracked the whole entire hopper. So we tried uh, TIG welding it with some light heat and it just kept spider webbing worse and worse and worse. So right now it is ground. We cut grooves, filled in the grooves with JV weld, sanded it. It is very, very smooth right now. It's not secure, so it's a little tippy. But um, it's super smooth. I just got to fill in a couple more divots. And uh, what's going to end up happening, since we're not going to be able to get that mirror polished, it's going to get sent out to the powder coater. And we'll go with the original aluminum color. Um, other than that, the engine has very strong compression. Uh, the bearings are great in it. It spins over freely. The flywheels are clean, no cracks. There's no welds, no brakes, no nothing in this engine. This was a very, very clean barn find in Vermont that I got pretty cheap. And um, we sanded it down, we painted it. Um, even got the uh, original skids from the railway car, which I actually have sitting over here. Here's the original railway car mounts. But uh, that won't fit on that tractor frame. Uh, likewise, here's the hood to the tractor. We're going to be sanding that down. It may have to go to a sandblaster. It's got a lot of, a lot of surface rust. It's very, very rough. So um, we're going to try to get it as flat as possible and then paint that the red. Um, sticking with, uh, I believe it's international red. It's a nice strong color, it really stands out. We're putting stainless hardware on everything, so uh, it pops a little bit. But um, getting a pulley for the flywheel so that we can run 
the original transmission here, which is belt driven with the tensioner. It's got dual brakes, so we can do uh, some pretty cool, uh, I guess, U-turns or donuts maybe. Uh, this thing also had a PTO, which came out the front, driven on the side with a dual pulley that was on the original Kohler engine. And there was also a PTO coming out the back, but both the front and rear pulleys were destroyed. I don't know how or why. So we're probably gonna just end up removing this because I can't put a dual pulley inside that crankshaft on the uh, flywheel there. So we'll just do away with it. But we finally got the, um, uh, the three point freed up that was completely seized and there's a hydraulic piston that mounts underneath that hydraulic piston we were rebuilding got two new seals for it and here's the original hydraulic pump from the tractor uh, that actually had a hole in it so again it's impossible to find parts for a tractor that's impossible to replace I had found out there was maybe uh, 150 of these tractors built in 1971 so a little bit of a rarity, but um, we had to uh, repair the reservoir, so we're going to see if it works. Likewise, the steering gear was a nightmare. This was a raw steering box. Um, I had it completely disassembled. It didn't steer at all, at all. Just fell apart, and um, we took it apart, and the bearings were just completely destroyed. And trying to find the correct size bearings with the correct amount of bearings was proven to be quite the task. So we hit up eBay and we found another one. Whole entire raw steering box. This is from a Power King tractor, but it's the identical steering shaft, identical steering box, and it even came with the same exact pitman arm, which I think is fantastic. So we're gonna use that. I sandblasted these, cleaned them up real nice. This one is assembled, but there's no bearings inside, so it'll act as a good spare in case I need it. This one is complete, steers perfect, no leaks. Uh, it's fully complete. We're gonna have that powder coated also. It'll uh, stand out, it's gonna pop. And uh, this is the outer pulley for the flywheel. That was the original belt pulley for the railway core. So with that being said, uh, to my other Fairmont QB, this one is a running engine. It's, um, it's a runner. <laughs> this thing jumps all over the place. It bounces. Boy, these things have some torque. And they can really rev up. And you can see somebody had identical problems to me where they couldn't get the... Uh, funnel off and they ended up breaking the bolts so they put nuts and bolts washes in there uh, i'm gonna have to figure out a way to mount my funnel on for the tractor so that it doesn't spill and splash all over the place and uh, my fuel tank is out uh hopefully getting replicated because there's a bolt that goes all the way through the fuel tank to mount it through the engine and it leaks it's just like this one this one leaks as well but um you know it's tough to find parts for engines from the 1920s 30s and 40s so uh, again, this one's a runner. She runs real good. I'm not going to fire it up now because, oh boy, it smokes. Running a 21, 20 to 1 mix on this one. And the gentleman I bought this off of in Connecticut, he's got an original Ford Motor Company uh, buzz coil, 6 volt system, and he put a Flowmaster muffler on it, and it smokes like a bandit. But uh, this is a QB also missing its nameplate, so I don't have any information on this one, just I know it's a newer version than the other engine, um, as it has a few updates. It has a tank bracket to stabilize the tank. It had um, a minor upgrade on the ignition system. It's plastic instead of metal, which um, leads me to believe it's a little bit newer. Also, it had a spring return on the throttle valve and my old engine did not. So I'm guessing these are some upgrades that they did through the model years. So that's what it looks like complete. Uh, clearly older restoration. Uh, it's a runner. So we're gonna get it on taller wheels so it's a little bit more stable and get rid of these legs in the front and put it on wheels and make a nice little pull cart so that the tractor can pull it around. Uh, this is the dashboard for the tractor. I'm gonna try to reuse it. It's gonna get sanded, painted. Um, it's just a couple little minor things I got to work on, about like an electrical system, uh, possibly an alternator or a generator that'll work when the engine's running to charge up a 12 volt battery to run the, um, the uh, three point hitch and pump motor. But uh, that's pretty much the update. Um, 
I'll keep you posted on the progress. Like I said, the wheels are gonna get sent out. The hopper's gonna get sent out once we finish filling in all the little imperfections. Um, the tractor's gonna end up being white and red. The rims are gonna be white. The uh, dashboard, steering gear, pitman arm, rims. And I think that should do it. That's all gonna be white. The hood and everything else is going to be red and i believe i don't know maybe i'll leave it up to you post it in the comments what color should the seat be right now it's aluminum that is cast aluminum i can send that out to the powder coater and go white or leave it the silver to match the hopper on the engine um, that is going to stay silver but it'll be covered up by the red hood the grill on the hood's going to be silver so post up in the comments what you think let me know what you think of the project it's coming along